I'd love to text people. <laughs> oh, your, if, if, you, if I knew your password and you left that phone on your desk, oh, my goodness. <laughs> There'd be some fun to be had. Fun for all. Time to kick it. <laughs> Who was that? That was kind of Sean Connery? That Sean was Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Kirk. I wish I could talk like him and, and do the opening. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Amos, along with me as always, Chet Sears and Troy Three Shot Trussell. We're glad <laughs> that you are here with us today. Man, that's a great, great intro. Was that better? That was. I feel I more you. awake today than I normally do. Yeah. Maybe it's because I have no decaffeinated coffee. I have no decaf coffee, and I had to drink the caffeinated stuff. My stomach is messed up, but my brain is on fire. <laughs> I like it. So that's wonderful. Today, we have what's on your mind with Chet Sears. All right, what's on my mind? The Olympics is on my mind. Okay. So we're we're recording this a couple days before release, and as it stands right now, U.S. is tied for gold medals at eight. At eight with Japan or China, China. No, Japan for gold, and we're just ahead of China for total total medal count. Yeah. So. Um, I, I'll have to say I grew up in a household that VHS taped the Olympics and would watch them for the next four years waiting on the next summer Olympic games to come around like that. That, I mean, big, big time. Wow. Just summer though. Not winter. Well, winter wasn't, I don't know, but I, I just, re I remember, I know the 84 games and the 88 games, I had they were on several VHS tapes each and would watch those. So I don't guess we recorded. I wasn't in charge of the VCR, but <laughs> the uh, the remote wired remote <clears throat> VCR, by the way, not a wireless remote. Wired, Boy, wired, we fancy. We didn't even have a wired remote. I had to go yeah. up there. Boop. Yeah, I had to go. Boop. Doot, doot. You wanted to record? Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but you guys are talking about like I'm talking all the way into when I went to college. We had a wired remote. Like we didn't upgrade. What just like an ancient? We didn't either. You still had to go up. I don't know. I don't believe you. I don't, I don't, I don't remember you. having a, a remote for the VCR ever. Yeah, I, that's not ringing a bell. Okay, fine. You guys so are you were fan more I mean, archaic <laughs> than than me. <laughs> we didn't. Maybe, maybe we, we did. We did know. not have a remote for the TV. Like that was the knob, the dial. Yeah, to Shiba. We bought that when we lived in Japan. Which, by the way, is where the Olympics are being hosted this year, Tokyo. Oh, no hey. <laughs> what a segue! That was incredible. So, uh, I, ha I mean, really do have a special place in my heart for uh, for for Japan and the Japanese people. Um, and and I don't remember a whole lot when I lived over there because I was young. But um, the impression they left on my folks and the pictures from the albums and all that just really good experience. So. Great job, Tokyo. It sucks that you're having to deal with uh, the 2020 Olympics in 2021. Um, but, you know, with the pandemic and all, it really sucks that there are no people in the stands. Like, that's a big deal Yeah, uh, for me. It's hard. It, it's just... Uh, Ruined football for me last year. Yeah. Well, this is worse. Like, there are some yeah. people. There's nobody. And they, and they piped in fans... <laughs> or applause or booze True. or whatever. Yeah. Not, so when in this Olympics, there's nothing. There's nothing. Yeah. And so I heard this morning on the radio that there was a guy who had spent like $40,000 on tickets. He had to stand outside and watch it on his phone. Watch the ceremony, opening ceremony that was going on. Huh. Like he was allowed to come there and be in the parking lot, but he had to <laughs> watch it on his phone. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, like, I, I mean, that that's horrible. And, and I, I don't, it's not Tokyo that's making all these decisions. I don't believe, I think it's mostly the national, the Olympic committee yeah. and yeah. IOC and they suck. I'll just go ahead and say it. <laughs> they, they're horrible. <laughs> We're holding nothing back. I but, like it, but really, no, uh, yeah. Cause I, we never hold back. Go ahead, Matt. Well, 
thing. So <laughs> you you have this IOC that's making all these rules and what I believe they're doing to a certain competitor is they're they're changing the rules because she is so good that so you're talking about Simone Biles. Yes. And they they've like, like there's there's moves that other competitors can't do that only she can do. There two of them specifically, one of them called the Biles and the other one is called the Biles 2 because she's doing two tricks that nobody else even dares attempt. Yeah. I say good, tricks, moves, whatever they're called. I don't know. I'm te- not a gymnast. Techniques or yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, but she literally has cre- like created these. Yep. And now they're like, well, they can't they can't score it appropriately because nobody else can do these moves. So they don't they don't even put it as the most. And I'll explain it to you a little bit here. So like, ten, I would say ten. That's no, there, a ten. There's a difficulty level for each trick. So if you say I'm going to do a routine and it's going to have these tricks in it. So that the, well, this you know, a uh, handstand is a A on difficulty level, um, and in the 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 and I'm just making that up. But the further you get out, it ended in um, I was the most difficult. The letter I, starting in A, and naturally, if there's nobody else on Earth that could perform a trick, the let's call it a move. The U.S. the U.S. Olympic Committee or the U.S. Gymnastics committee said so, well those those moves are now J's. Right? So you're allowing for growth in the sport. It's people are going to get more different which happens in every performance sport. We just saw like the this some twelve year old land a trick that Tony Hawk couldn't do. You know, I mean so everything's in Tony Hawk that did things that nobody before him can do. So every sport is getting more and more right. Well it, the gymnastic the gymnastic world is saying, well, it's too dangerous for people to try to do as stuff as difficult as her. So that's, we're instead of stupid. instead of a J, we're 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 not even going I. We're gonna go back to an H with her her tricks. So she could nail something that nobody else can do, but her difficulty score isn't gonna be as high as somebody that's doing something. So she's worse. getting penalized for being too good. For being exactly awesome and the in the in the ioc is okay with this like they're like yeah that's that's what we need to do oh, and for that, the protection of everybody else and that is the problem in the world right now a problem a one of the problems yeah one of the you, many you're too you're too good <laughs> stop yeah but let and, other people let other people get who, better who don't do as good and, and I'll tell you, and this 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 goes straight into that. One of the things that I don't like about sports in general that 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 are judged, it just it, there's too much room that the for the judges or the rules for the judges. Because uh, what if that judge? Okay, you, this is what that trick is worth. That's what the committee's telling me, and that's what I have to do, right? So it's not necessarily that the judge is corrupt in this this scenario, but many other times we've seen them where they were, and this goes to figure skating. Um, heck, uh, all this uh, synchronized business. Like uh, any sport that doesn't allow for one opponent to beat the other one in fair scoring more baskets, shooting, you know, scoring more goals, um, shooting more clays, all that, that's not hard, right? But in, when you get into these judge sports, then you then it's not it's not just left up to the competitors, and that stinks. It's a I'm judge's a interpretation. Yeah. And I, I'm not a big fan of that. And the Olympics is full of judge sports. And what I don't like about the coverage of the Olympics is that's where they, they, they tend to do a lot of their focus is on all these judged sports, which allows for more opportunity for, uh, for me to get frustrated anyway, because they're like, I don't agree with the scoring system. I don't think the judge saw that. Well, I can't believe they're penalizing for that. Let's just line them up and, and fight. So some of the highlights so far of what I've seen, uh, from the, this, this year's Olympics, uh, Amber English and Vincent Hancock. And I know you listeners out there right now are saying, Who? I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Amber English and Vincent Hancock. Well, they're, they're shotgunners. They shoot skeet for the U S team. Amber English just shot gold, one gold and skeet, which is stinking. Awesome. This is her first Olympic appearance. Um, one of the things that's really neat about her is the, the, the lady that trained her, her idol growing up, her name is Kim Rohde. Kim Rohde um, is a 
Olympic medal record holder. And you, you don't even know who she is because she's in a shooting sport. But she, Kim Rohde, and she didn't qualify this year. Actually, Amber English bumped her out of the qualification in, in, in the trials, which is kind of neat because she trained her and, and, and now we're, we're being passed on. But Kim Rohde won her first gold in 1996. And in every Olympics up until Rio, she won a medal, which is phenomenal. She's won an won a Olympic medal on every continent on the earth except Antarctica. She is a workhorse, and nobody knows who she is. We could all say, well, so-and-so won this swimming medal, and da 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 We're going back to 1996 to 2016, and she's medaled every, every Olympics, every Summer Olympics. Now, they hadn't all been gold. She's won three gold. Silver, bronze that's been in there. She actually started out with uh, double trap. Well, the Olympics dropped double trap as a sport. So she moved over to skeet, and she started winning medals in skeet. Didn't, didn't skip a beat. So that's frustrating, too, that if you look at from a coverage perspective, Vincent Hancock, three consecutive gold medals. This has never been done before in in shooting, in a shooting sport. Not never been done before in the Olympics or in the U.S. It's never been done before in the Olympics. Three gold medals, uh, which which is phenomenal. So big fan of 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 those two and Kim Rohde. Um, a ne- little never seen them on a box of Wheaties. No, no, no. They're sh- they're shooting sports, so naturally, uh, you know, whatever media it's NBC. We're not gonna. We'll we'll show it. You know, it's it's out there, but they're not talking about it. It's not a big story. Both Amber and Vincent served in in uh, in the army. Um, I think Vincent's been in the army. I know Amber was. Um, I, so veterans uh, just dominating their sport. And which, that and that army marksmanship team. Yeah, that those guys shoot on. I've I've had the opportunity to shoot uh, with the army marksmanship team. They are. Like we we talk we give each other a hard time about who's the better shooter. I mean I've got the trophy here, but <laughs> um, they are otherworldly. Yeah. When it I mean they are insane, and it's it they set up the exact same way every time. They raise their gun the same way every time, and there's smooth transitions and follow throughs. It's it's awesome yeah. awesome to watch, and I've I've met a lot of the uh, the Olympic shooters uh, because we when we go to the wild sheep. Uh, convention um, in Reno. Uh, one of the one of the days is a uh, uh, it's an air capital or not an air capital um, capital city gun club in Carson City, Nevada, and we go to a uh, sporting clays uh, range there. And most of these guys don't shoot sporting clays. You know they're trap skeet, and so it levels the playing field a little bit, <laughs> but not enough. Yeah, they are just incredible, incredible shooters. Yeah, a- absolutely. And and so US shooting team, we we want gold in the 10 10 meter air rifle as well. It, it uh, the reason the US is is tied for first in golds right now is because of our shooters is because of our shooters, which wow. is fantastic. That's awesome. And I wish they would get more coverage. Um Kelsey Stewart, a Mays High graduate, hit a walk-off home run softball. to beat Japan in softball. Um, and as of right now, they have to play Japan for the medal round, which hasn't taken place while we're recording this, but they beat them in the uh, pool play to get them in the, the medal round, I believe. So that's fantastic. You know, home, hometown girl, uh, doing some dominating things out there. That's going to help hopefully take our softball team to gold as well. Uh, USA men's basketball is embarrassing. <laughs> and I got, I'm not throwing shade. At, oh, I'll, I'll throw shade all day. Players specifically, but Greg Popovich has to go. And, and I, I was reading some article uh, about this, and I think there's pretty good consensus that the men's national team coaches has been like a lifetime achievement award on coaches on their way into retirement. We got to stop that. We need some, some young coaches in there that are passionate about winning. Uh, for for our country and I, I'll tell you one of the players said because we lost to France and one of the players said these Europeans all play in the NBA but when we play on a national level those players play differently like they are a lot more passionate when they play for their country than when what we see on the court and we don't see that from 
Team USA NBA or Team USA basketball. Not the dream team anymore, huh? No. Well, there's a couple things that have been different, but the the pride in your country, I don't think, is being displayed by our team, and it is being displayed by every basketball team that they play. Yeah. Well, and I mean, the reason that the dream team was created was because the it didn't used to be professionals that that played. Yeah. And we were getting killed. And then they said, we need to assemble a dream team because we're going to stop this. And then they formed the dream team and they killed everybody. Yeah. I mean, not even close. Yeah. So I I don't know. I, that's just, and, and if you start looking at a lot of the team sports, so if you, if there's a couple common things that we've talked about on where we're excelling other than softball um, is indiv- at the individual level. And it, in the team level, you want to look at some, some women's soccer, got some losses under the belt. Men's basketball have been losing prelim games, right? They're, they, It's not like a shocker that we're not that good in, in Olympic play. We were, we had a losing record in the preliminaries. So, or in, in the, all the games leading up at the international level. So this is just, it's got to stop. Like this is not okay uh, from a national level. Um, I'll tell you another thing I've never sat and watched, uh, but I I had an opportunity to do it this past weekend. Lee Kiefer on women's foil. Do you even know what I'm talking about? No. No. Do you? Foil, like a sword? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a very flexible, like, fencing deal. Yeah. It's a a lot more. I watched her gold medal attempt and success on winning the gold medal. U.S. have never won in, in foil. Uh, 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 I never won a medal and she, she wins gold. She's a, <laughs> she's a med student from Kentucky and you went out there and, and dominated. It was fantastic. Yeah. And, and again, a sport that's not necessarily judged. The judge has some, they did some video replays on who got who first and was somebody defending instead of attack. I don't know. There's a lot of rules about that. I don't understand, but, um, I, that, that was phenomenal and, and congratulations to her uh, and, and hopefully our sword sports can can get some uh, momentum off of this as well. Uh, others, I, one of the things I just really like about the Olympics is you get to watch stuff like table tennis. You get to watch water polo. Like, holy cow. I think if you want to stack up athletes and say, like, who's the most brutal powerful, strong endurance athletes that are out there. These, these water polo guys and, and ladies, I it's hard to believe they're treading water all this time, sprinting on swimming, <laughs> throwing this ball around and getting clubbed and try to be drowned. Every time they go to do they have the ball. It's this, that's fantastic. So watch a couple of rounds of uh, water polo. I think that's pretty cool. Skateboarding's new this year. Your kids are getting into skateboarding. Yeah, man. They love it. It's so, awesome. I almost killed myself on a skateboard last couple weekends ago. Yeah, you need to wear a helmet. Yeah. Well, I, I broke my toe. And yeah. Which toe? One time I fell off. Right foot, the one right next to the big toe. Ooh. Yeah, yeah broke the first joint. I think I broke it because it's still sore. <laughs> It'll get better. I can oh, yeah. I can bend it. Do you tape it to the next toe and get some, go about your day? Probably a good idea. Yeah. You won't be, be able nice. to wear flip-flops, though. It must be nice. <laughs> broken too (laughs) (laughs) and then i fell off just straight went out from under me fell on my hip and my elbow yeah and was sore for a few days went to a chiropractor feel a lot better maybe that's what i should have done what does a chiropractor do with the toe no, that this you missed piggy. the second oh, in, injury. Yeah, I wasn't listening. Yeah, to this that. little piggy went to market. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fifty bucks. <laughs> oh, I feel no, so much better. I, I Thanks, fell, Doc. fell on my hip and my left elbow and knocked all this out of alignment. Don't do that. Yeah. Why are you on a skateboard? Because I want to be that cool hip. 42 year old dad that's like, hey man, I'm a skateboard. You're gonna be a cool too. hip replacement. 42 year old dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last time we went to the skate park, Hannah was like, "Don't get on a skateboard." Yeah, that's not cool, man. It's like, take some rollerblades out there, though. That'd be cool. That that's even you'd be uh, the cool forty-two year old dad then. Nah, last some time jams. I rode, you could wear some jams. <laughs> <laughs> last time I rode those, probably in college. Anyway, what? So you haven't been watching anything? You're just upset about the whole deal because IOC. 
sucks. Yeah, I mean, when you start trying to to handicap people because they're awesome, it goes against what the competition is about. You're trying to find the best in the world. Why are you going to hand? She's obviously the best in the world. Why are you going to handicap her? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. And, you know, on the team sports thing, you know, I'm a huge soccer fan. I love mm -hmm. soccer, but it, it almost, it, it's almost like they're trying to focus more on social justice than practicing and trying to win. Well, and I, I don't know. I mean, to me, it's, it, it goes back to go woke, get smoked. I mean, concentrate on your craft. Yeah. Do what you're there to do. Represent this country, good or bad. Because, you know, and, and that's the thing that, that irritates me is, you know, the the people saying, you know, the, the flag is a symbol of, of hate and oppression, you know, and it's like, okay, that's that's exactly the opposite of what that stands for. Let this be the time that we all come together as a country and try to support our athletes that are going over there. But when they're turning around and the, the chick who takes third and shot put getting the most attention because she's not going to stand for the, you know, national anthem or turns her back, you know, when first and second place are, are right there, she, come on, why, yeah. why are we focusing on that? You know, we don't need, we don't need the drama. We need to come together. And it's, it's super frustrating for me to, to see that because you're there and I don't care what anybody thinks you're there to represent the United States. You're not there to represent yourself yeah. and you, you need to act. And, and you're, you're at a venue so I watched the the opening ceremonies, which is something I normally do. Um, number one, it was weird because they're there waving no, no and there's nobody in the stands. <laughs> right? Yeah, I did. We did watch the opening <laughs> ceremony, but <laughs> but you, you're talking about people that are you know protesting the U.S. because of oppression when there are nations competing in the Olympics that will not allow women to compete. And then there are other nations. So the the, the there committee. Are, there are nations competing right now, carrying the United States flag down their streets. Yeah. So, but our athletes won't. And and they're they're also like they try to thing where they're going to have men and women flag bearers, which typically has always been men. Uh, and so they're encouraging all the countries. Hey, let's. Let's, you know, so that was obvious the ones that didn't even allow women to participate. They only had men in competition. And then there were other ones that had women that were participating, but they're all wrapped up and weren't allowed to have a representative carry their flag, a woman representative. So if we want to talk about oppression, you know, and uh, heck, one of the jokes that was made while we were watching, I won't name who, who said it, but like uh, it was a swim deal and some uh, a person from China one like, oh, they're they're going to let get their parents out of prison now. Like, you know, what happens to them if they lose? You know, the, the and it's, you know, tongue in cheek joke. But there's some countries out there that that's that's legit. Iraq you know? was one of them. So anyway, and, you know, I don't know. I, I just I've enjoyed um, some of the things that, that we've got to watch. do kayaking like whitewater. Oh, my gosh. Those people are talented. Um, just going through those poles and leaning and you know while they're paddling, <laughs> that's some cool stuff. And the stuff you don't get to see every day. I'm supporting all of that. I got a little bit excited because I felt going into this that this is just going to be lame with all the politics and stuff. But then when you start getting into some of these stories of the individuals that are there, the Ambers, the Vincents, the Kelseys, the Lee Kiefer's. Uh, it's, it's, it still gets you fired up, you know, and we still have some world-class athletes and that care and go out there yeah. and, and bust their tails and, and beat people, you know, not everybody's going to win. I know, but we, we've got some folks that are doing some really good things and it's, it's been exciting. And there's, I mean, there's some good stories from competitors from other countries as well oh, yeah. that have extremely compelling stories. And that's, that's fun to watch, you know, them succeeding, uh, just being being there is, yeah. is a big deal. We saw, um, oh, uh, somebody from the Philippines won the first medal ever from the Philippines, never medaled, and and they, I think won gold. Wait, one of the weightlifting deals. Yeah. Today. Yeah. I mean that that's cool. I mean, yeah, that know, is cool. Just uh, big time. And, yeah, and to watch her, to watch her. I think they were doing the. Uh, I don't even know what that technique's called. Um, I don't either. But, I mean, when she cleared it, you could see. I mean, she just 
bam, dropped it and, and, and broke down, you know, and that yeah. meant, I mean, she got it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's like, yeah, exci- extremely excited and, yeah. and emotional, you know, and that's, that's what used to be fun to, to watch, you yeah. know, and on the, on the American side of things, um, the, the sports that I enjoy just, just aren't the, aren't the same. Aren't the same. I, and I, I can't remember what it was. I think it was Iceland. They were talking about, uh, some competition that they had where they medaled last Olympics and there was a 97% of all the TVs in Iceland were tuned into that when they were competing. That's cool. I mean that, yeah, that's, that's really neat to have that kind of support and that whole nation is behind these athletes and, um, yeah, that, that was neat. And then we don't, we don't see that everywhere from the U S not, not just the, the nation supporting, which would be great if they did, but also the athletes supporting back. Yeah. Just being grateful and actually wanting to show the best of what the U S is on the world stage. Because I could tell you a lot of the stuff that you protest here, you go anywhere else, it's going to be worse. Um, Oh, just, just about anywhere. So anyway, that's my, that's what's been on my mind. The Olympics and well, and and all that's going on, you know, when I, when I see all of this, it, it, it brought to mind a, uh, a quote and uh, I'm going to read it. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Yeah. I'm going to read it. So, uh, it says hard times, create strong men, strong men, create good times, good times, create weak men and weak men create hard times. And we're somewhere, in, we're somewhere in those last two because it's no matter what anybody says. I mean, we, we live in the, one of the easiest countries to live in. Yeah. You know, I mean, they have the opportunity to go and, and this is their passion and that's what they do. And that's all that they, they're committed to that. Mm-hmm. You can't do that everywhere, you know? And so we're, we're extremely blessed to be, to be here, to, to be in this nation, to, to be as free as we are. And yet it's unappreciated. Right. They, they have an opportunity to have the world stage and you're going to draw attention to some issue that's there. And I'm just saying, that's not the opportunity. Like that's, that, not that's, the, not that's not the, that's not the time. That's, that's not, it shows weakness. Yeah. And by the way, you on, live, a, on a world scale and you live in a, a country where it's okay to do that. Like uh, congratulations, we, we can be upset about it, but nobody's coming to arrest you or nobody's yeah. going to hurt your family because you did something like yeah. that. So yeah. anyway, what in addition, Oh, overtime, we're getting some free discussion. Yes. I think I, I saw something on, on, on Facebook and it was just a little comment that said, it's great to have all these world-class athletes competing and doing really well in their events, but there's no scale. So why don't we just put an average person? (laughs) This Bill Murray to do that's attributed to Bill Murray. Is it? Yeah. To do every event just to know what a normal person would be able to do. Yeah. And (laughs) cause I was, you know, uh, back in the day, you know, I ran, uh, I ran track and so the 800 meters was my jam. Yeah. And I was really good at the 800. Mm-hmm. And then I'm looking at some of those, the women's run times. And I'm like, I mean, I, I would have qualified. I wouldn't have won, you know? And it's like, I mean, and they're smoking. Cause I know what it took out of me. Of course I was only, I was a junior, Yeah, you know, so I didn't even get uh, to the collegiate level, but they're fast. Yeah. You know, and, and even back in the day, like watching Michael Johnson, um, you know, run the 400 and mm-hmm. seeing those, that mm-hmm. world record time. And I'm like, <laughs> like I, I don't even know how that's possible, <laughs> right, man. Like, right. uh, you know, my, my fastest was like in the, in the like 52, <laughs> 51, you know, and yeah. he's at 43, you know, he'd beat me by a whole like nine seconds. And it's like, yeah, good night. <laughs> so it's, it's extreme. Put me out the, not now. I mean, cause I yeah. finished last no matter what they'd lap me about 500 times. Depends before. on what kind of rocket you could put on those legs. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll be in the stands. Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny though. Cause, uh, one of the podcasts I listened to called revisionist history did some, uh, Malcolm Gladwell. I think, I think this is where I remember it from. Um, we talked about Simone Biles getting so much better. Tony Hawk skateboarding, keep, keep progressing. Well, the, um, uh, running has not quite progressed because uh, they did a study on Jesse Owens, uh, his mechanics from th- from the video, and considering that he was running on cinders instead of the the surface that they run on today, 
they didn't have the starting blocks like that. They literally took a garden trial out there and dug a hole to, to run out of to try to get some traction. That based on his time that he was able to run, if you factor in the technology shift in, in the running surface and the starting blocks, that he would he would be right up there with everybody now, like Usain Bolt. You know, he'd, he'd be, yeah. um, which is which is pretty interesting. So overall speed. Now, if you start talking time and distance, that that's some that's that's drastically improved. But that's been a mind shift, not a physics physical shift. But uh, when you get into flippy spinnies and all that kind of stuff on <laughs> gymnastics, uh, that's 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 an athletic. It's been shift. a mi- but a mind a mind thing too. Like oh, you can't do three twists. Well, watch me do four. You know, you know. So you just practice and work on that technique and get get beyond um, that. But the other thing that they talked about is the the size of gymnasts of athlete in general um like gymnasts have sh- has shrunk like the gymnasts that were competing competing not too long ago 50 60 years ago were like five or six inches taller than, than the ones that are competing now so then from a physics perspective of spinning and flipping they can um, do more yeah so it's not necessarily skill set or ability it's a mind shift that you can do something that crazy and then they're getting the the bodies are starting to match what those things are after well, that's what I would find it- interesting about the runners because I think the runners are getting taller. Yeah, I, I, I would. Well, I would like to know I mean, how, how tall at, Jesse Owens was and, and what he weighed. And you look at um, you look at like the gymnasts, the dudes, and you're like, man, that dude, man, that other guy's awesome. Uh, he's he's an athlete, and then he goes to do the the bar, not the double one, but the the big bar, and his coach has to go out there and pick him up. Because he can't jump, <laughs> jump high enough to. Yeah, I'm like, okay, yeah, it kind of seems a little lame. You should be able to jump up here and grab that thing, you know. But he's five two, so it's, it's just not gonna do it. He's a yoked up five like, two though. If I could do a flippy spinny around that bar, my toes are gonna drag, you know. But he needs help jumping up. That there. bar's gonna be bent. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> <laughs> Way down. Way down. Oh. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's take a break to hear from our sponsor. Let's do it. This episode is brought to you by Admirals Pennant Beard Oil. Visit admiralspennant.com for all your beard oil needs. Yeah. That, that's what we use. That's what I used to use. <laughs> you need to grow it out. I should. Are you going to hey, another fall beard? Uh, possibly if I go duck hunting. But if I do, I'm going to use some Admiral's Bennett. That's for sure. You get that right. Where do you get it, Matt? I think you just told him. Admiral'sPennant.com. That's right. www.admiral'sPennant.com. And it comes with a nice letter from the owner. Yeah, every one of them. So tell them Hardheaded sent you. Thanks, Admiral's Pennant, for sponsoring this episode. This commercial just smells different. <laughs> And we're back. Oh, that's your job. I mean, yes, I was totally focused on the uh, the sounds and the mixing of the things. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks, Chet, for that exciting. What's on your mind? What's on your mind about the it's thrilling U.S. Olympics? Thrilling, thrilling. I just don't know how they get those horses in the pool for the water polo. Ah, that's funny. I watched some dressage. Some what dressage Fan- fancy horses so they get the horses to do the <laughs> the dancing they do yeah it's that kind of thing the fancy horses horse dancing yeah that did not keep my attention that long <laughs> there that were, also had some olympic athletes that were like 57 years old riding those horses so i'm like mm. uh, yeah hey you can be good for a long time just like shooting yeah there's some older folks in the shooting and the uh what else there's a few things yeah. Okay. All right. Top three. Top On to our what? top three. So today, our top three, top three family movies. All right. Family movies. Family movies. They just should be the same war movies. Should be the same list. Your family should be watching awesome war movies. They Not technically, you technically youngins. any movie that you're going to watch with your family would be a family movie. Yeah. That's what we're defining it as. That we should watch with our family. That we should watch or we are watching? I don't know. Let's hear what your list is. Okay. Well, my list, 
My oldest child is 11. Yes. Almost 11. Yes. Youngest is two. Okay. Yeah. I'm with you, man. All right. So I'll watch him saving private Ryan. Okay. Okay. Not yet. Uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they want to know what people went through and, yeah. and they will watch it. Uh, you know, soon enough. Let's but. breed a generation of warrior <laughs> champions. Okay. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. All right. So number three is a recent movie that I watched with the whole family. Oh, Luca. Uh, never heard of it. Never heard. Yeah. Of it. So it's the it's a new Disney movie. Oh, and of on, course. on Disney Plus. And uh, it's about this little sea dragon creature that when they get on land, they turn into humans and they he and his buddy go to this town. And yeah, it's great. Great little fun little family movie. All right. All right. Is it funny? It is pretty funny. Silencio Bruno is like a big thing my kids run around saying because that's what they said. Is uh, the mom a villain? No. What I really like about it is it wasn't a princess with a stepmother or a mom who's the villain. It was completely off Disney's like spectrum of what they do. Cool. Yeah, it's a fun little movie. Uh, Number two... Is the Wizard, nineteen eighty nine? Fred Savage, ring a bell? No, no. It reminds me of a Seinfeld episode though, where they have the Wiz. Look at that. <laughs> everything reminds you of Seinfeld. Well, because Seinfeld talks about everything. God, I hear that? So Fred at Savage at least three times a week. I know who Fred Savage is. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. from his, the Wonder Years. Right, his character and Gold another Member movie. Austin Powers, Gold Member. Yeah, he was in there. <laughs> the mole. He was the mole. <laughs> mole, mole, mole. <laughs> and he was great in, family movie. He was in Little Monsters <laughs> back yeah. in the eighties. Yeah, he was in uh, the Princess Bride. Yeah, yeah, Princess Bride. He yeah. was a little boy. Yeah. So, yeah, in the Wizard, his character has a little brother who's like this video game prodigy. Yes, it's starting to ring a bell. It's starting to ring a bell. So he figures out that his little brother can play his video games, so they travel cross-country to go to the video game championship. Yeah, I think I remember Where his little brother competes. Yeah. 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 So it's a really fun movie. Yeah. Um, About running away from home. Yeah. 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 Cool. Haven't showed it to my seven-year-old yet because he's a flight risk. But anyway. (laughs) Have a conversation with me. I ran away a few times. Oh, okay. I'll tell you all about it. Great. And number one. Another Fred Savage movie. You just brought up The Princess Bride. It is actually one of my, you know, in the top 10, maybe five favorite movies of all, all time. time. Yeah. But it is my number one family movie. Yeah. It's just all around good. good yeah. Family Conceivable. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. So 1987. All right. So the Billy Crystal role, I mean, did we already talk about this? I think we already talked yeah, about this. He basically ad libbed all, all that. Yeah, that whole scene. Yeah. yeah. The bit of despair. All right. That's awesome. Who, who's next? You, Matt, are you next? Uh, No, you can go. <laughs> all right. I will go. Do it. Number three. Three. The Goonies. So my yeah. kids are all a bit older than your kids. Yes. They say some a few choice words in that movie that I don't want my kids saying. The Goonies. Your kids are already hearing them, by the way. Oh, Those choice words. I know they are. Fun. That's a fun movie. A little scary, but fun and very quotable. Um, number two, The Princess Bride. For all the things we've already talked about. Mm-hmm. Number three, Napoleon Dynamite. Yes, that's a good one. That one, um, instant favorite. Like we finished it and the kids were like, let's watch it again. Like right now. And then Ashley's not a fan of movies like that, but, uh, they were all on her. Like, Hey, we got to watch this. We got to watch this. We got to watch this. And then she started, we started it. And then she's like really confused. Like what? Why is this? And then the kids just started laughing at all the parts that they laugh at. And she got tickled because they were enjoying it so much. And then she kind of enjoyed the whole thing too. So, so, I got a quick honorable mention mm-hmm. that I have to name because it's my boy's like favorite movie. Uh, Nacho Libre. Yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah, yeah, I would give that an honorable mention. That is 
their if if this was their top three, Nacho Libre would be number one. Yeah. So I got to mention. I got to. So we are the the most pull pulled line from that movie for my kids would be it's the best. It's the best. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my Have kids, you not seen it? No. Oh, you got to see it. Every, I've, no, I've started it about five times because everybody keeps talking about how great this movie is. I can't. It's it's just like uh, the, the he the, he didn't like the Three Amigos either. That's what I, I was getting ready to say. I can't yeah. finish Dude. the Three Amigos. I cannot finish. Your list is going to be lame. Not I, mm. every time he jumps, he farts, and my kids <laughs> fall out on the floor laughing. Like he farted. It's hilarious. <laughs> Toilet humor. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Do you say fart around your kids? Your we do kids? now. We're just giving up. Yeah. Finley's going to be wrecked, man. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say fart around your kids? Mm. What'd you call it? Toot? <laughs> huh? Probably fart. Yeah, fart. <laughs> but we really don't talk about it too much, you know? I got girls. So. You got girls, yeah. Yeah, so we had a conversation about this with my mom. Because she was like, you know, you can't use crass words like fart. I was like, well, what did you say? Because we're trying to figure this out with our kids when they're really younger. It's like, what'd you say growing up? She's like, let a stinker. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, yeah, that was it. That was the polite oh, way to man. say it. It's My like, dad used to say, whoopser. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> like, what, what just happened in here? Did somebody just let a stinker? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway, I thought that was funny. That's good. All right. Hey, Let's Troy, Troy threw in an honorable mention. Yeah. It's, it's becoming a thing. I like this. Yeah. It's you're, you're, fun. you're doing it more and more. <laughs> so, do you have any more? I'm good, man. You're good. I may throw in one later. But <laughs> All right. So, number three, second hand lions. Okay. I uh, don't think I've ever seen Haley, that. Joel, Osmond. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Robert, and, uh, Robert, Robert Duvall, Duvall, Michael Caine. Two brothers. And they're just adventurers. And kid goes to live with them. And uh, just a lot of good life lessons uh, with good stories in that movie. Spit it out. What'd you do? It's, it's dribbling down his chin. What do you? I have no idea. He's getting ready to spit that water out, though. <laughs> what was that? I'm, I'm interested to see where this is going to go. Secondhand lions? <laughs> oh, no, sorry. I looked over at you and you were like yawning. <laughs> I was Thanks, like, Chet. I already told I was, you your list was lame. I was thinking in my head, it's not that lame. Dude. Yeah, it is that lame. <laughs> right yeah. when I took a sip of water. Oh, gosh. All right. He's, sorry he's about too, that. Better get, it better get better. <laughs> he's too old. Uh, the next one, uh, Karate Kid. Oh, great family movie. One, yeah. two, and three. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> the series. Uh, yeah, I mean, even, you know, the, the next Karate Kid, um, all the way up until you get... Uh, Will Smith's son, that's where it stops. Like, I really don't think that those ones are that good. There was only one, right? Yeah. yeah. I, don't you never try to remake an original. Yeah. Like you just don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. Now, what's another movie that was ruined? They ruined it trying to remake it? Red Dawn. Like, you don't need to. It's just like stand alone. I don't know. <laughs> I know. I think the second one's pretty good. No, it's not. Uh, I, I, I went. <laughs> So I I I broke down and ex- actually watched the first one because I'd never seen it. I'd yeah. only seen the second one. Red Dawn. Yeah, you didn't borrow it from me because I have it on DVD. No, I didn't need to borrow it from you. It's on Netflix. Okay. Or Prime. It's something, awesome. Something like that. It is awesome. Uh, not really. Say what you will. You're just trying to get me riled up. I mean, You're trying to get me whipped up into a pretty good frenzy. Quote from the movie. You have to uh, transport your mind back to VHS age and watch it. And then it's okay. It's a pretty good movie. What do, what do you mean by that? Like it's it's old. It's bad. The acting is terrible. The no, acting is terrible. No, it's awesome. No. What's bad about it? Have you The cry scene. 
The cry scene's How the worst. How would you feel if you were in a concentration camp? And your kids, you didn't know if they were dead or alive, and then you kind of found out there's got this underground gorilla the outfit going, and then you realize you're going to die in that cage, and your kid's probably going to die because they're fighting, but you're proud of them. You wouldn't be composed and come across like you're an awesome actor. All I'm, all I'm saying is if they're looking for these <laughs> kids and they go up to the fence, what kind of security is that at a concentration camp? <laughs> Like, if they can just walk up, why don't you just walk out? Dude, it's occupied. Occupido. Uh, not, they, very well, not very well. It's it's a military. There's a lot of compliant citizens. So they're just like, these ones that are not compliant, we're putting over here. Everybody else, we got to go about our day buying toothpaste and whatnot. I'm telling you, there's not a hole there. Trying there's to make a, a hole. There's a big hole there. Uh, I well, mean, if they're not compliant, why are they out? Why are they not out? Just doop, climb over the vents leave well let me tell you something else you and your red dawn 2012 that was china that was the bad guys but then they're like oh we can't have I upset actually, china so we're gonna say it's north korea well north korea doesn't have the money to pull off a whole invasion of the united states talk about unrealistic <laughs> you don't know that they don't have that kind of they money don't have that kind of money everybody knows that i mean they don't even have I the number of people to do that i don't know that i, I think they might they you're might just, be a little malnourished. You're just you're trying to just justify your disdain for good cinema. Uh, <laughs> good cinema is a stretch. number one, Matt. Number one. Number one, the great outdoors. Yeah, oh, that's a good one. So i I can sit. You know, my my that's one family movie that my kids will actually sit and and watch again. Um, now the uh, now the Karate Kid, like. My my oldest really doesn't get that into it, but my youngest, when the, and I I think I've talked about this mm-hmm. on the podcast before, but you know when when Johnny gets kicked in the face, <laughs> and Daniel wins, and my daughter squeals, yeah, it's it's perfect. I was like, man, I didn't squeal because I was a boy, but that was awesome. <laughs> so I get really excited about watching the Karate Kid, and I I. You know, Cobra Kai is awesome. It's not necessarily appropriate. No, I'm with you. It's not. Oh, yeah. It's not. You know. For kids. For, for, for kids. family. For yeah. family. It's meant for our generation because it's what we grew up right. with. Right, yeah. And it's also not a movie. Yeah, it is a series. Yeah. But The Great Outdoors, I mean, it's it's funny. You know, Dan Aykroyd, John Candy, you know. Yeah, comedic, classic. Comedic duo. Also one yeah. of the uh, better characters named Chet in a movie from the 80s. Uh, yeah, yeah, not the not the pile of poo. poo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good movie. I enjoy Weird watching that. Science, one. not a family movie by any stretch of the means. I don't. Know. What's the one? Weird Science. Is that the Val Kilmer one? No, that's the one where Chet's a big pile of poo. Oh, at the that's end. it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That should be every movie. <laughs> <laughs> it is in real life. That's Oscar. <laughs> that's Oscar worthy. <laughs> Anyway, oh, that's man. my that's that's my top three. You got an honorable mention out there? I, I probably actually put Karate Kid number one. Okay, all right. Honorable mentions, not really. Um, my kids are still in that transition with a lot of animated stuff, and I just I can't I don't do animated movies. Yeah. So, not even Transformers. Hated trans. I, I never even watched that as a kid. Mm-hmm. Do not like Transformers. No, I'm talking like the cartoon Transformers from back in when you were a kid. Yeah, I didn't watch it back then either. Yeah, okay. It had the D word in it. Oh yeah, GI Joe had a yeah had a cuss word in it too. Yeah, yeah. I right on. I wouldn't know. Yeah. All right. Are we moving on? Yeah. Well, let's move on to our uh, good word and Troy. Yes. What do you got? Well, I have a, a a quote here from the Lord of the Rings, which, given the age of your kids, can be a family movie or a family and, se- movie series. And the rings are kind of like the Olympic rings? <laughs> no, let me read the quote. Okay. Even the smallest person can change the course of the future. 
Do you remember who said it in the movie? I've never seen Lord of the Rings. Have you read the book? No. Oh man, that that's that's sad. Sad. But that was that would be said about Frodo, and it would probably Gandalf the Gray. Close. It was Galadriel. I'm probably butchering that name because I'm not a Lord of the Rings book nerd. Um, so correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But she was the Lady of the Light, the royal elf. Yeah. But she was basically saying, like... Even the smallest person can what? Change, even, change the world. Yes. Can change the course of the future. So no matter, no matter how small you are, you can still have an impact in, uh, in what you do. So it kind of goes back to some of the people in the Olympics that may be getting overlooked. You know, and the shooters, they're still having an impact. And if you look at scripture, the people God used to, to carry on, you know, the Bible yeah. and, and the word of God, all those people were not the biggest, most powerful, most powerful, brightest people. Yeah. But they were still used. So, yeah, doesn't matter how big or small you are. You can still achieve greatness. Or make an impact. Or make an impact. Or change the course of the future. Correct. Yeah. Which I don't necessarily know that you're going to change the course of the future because ultimately I believe that that's in God's control. Yeah, but he uses people to he do it. He might use you to do that. Yeah, that's the whole you're thing. You're not going to do it on your own. No. I think that's what that's saying. I don't know. No, it's not. No? Mm-hmm. I've never seen it, so you you Well, Tolkien was uh, a believer and I, I was think or is he's dead. Was. Is he dead? Well, yeah. he's alive in Christ. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, so inter interwoven into his writings are all kind of good scriptural benefits. We're going to, we're going to have to like force you to watch it. Yeah. Are you opposed to it? <laughs> no, it, it's more just in that sci-fi realm. Mm, oh no. Mm, I think it's not sci-fi. No. It's more in the fantasy realm, if you want to put it in a realm. Yeah, but it's a statement on what was happening in the real world at that time. Yeah. Well, I, and I can kind of get that, but still, the the whole, I just don't watch that. Have you seen the recent movie about Tolkien's early years? You ought to watch mm-hmm. that, and then that'll probably help you decide if you want to watch The Lord of the Rings. No, I'm making the decision for you. You need to watch it. Uh, No. I don't think you need to watch it. Okay. <laughs> you, good try Chad good try I saw where you're going there <laughs> alright yeah well good stuff guys yeah hey I'm I'm uh, just a little little bit of show note thing here I'm really excited about some of these episodes we got coming up we've got some fantastic guests yeah we do that are dialed in who do we got coming up well we have Do I think we might have a guest every episode for, for the next three episodes i think we do my son in a hard-headed first three guest speak or guest speakers guests special guests special guests my son's grandfather mm. my son's uncle's dad and my father-in-law your wife's dad all the same guy he's gonna be on we've got a phenomenal guest in uh Jim Kelly coming up and then some wedding humor with uh, somebody that Troy's worked with Grant, Grant Watkins. Uh, he's a wedding wedding photographer. Yeah. Photo journalist, photo journalist extraordinaire. Yes. Um, yeah. Lots that, of good um, stuff coming up. Yeah. So stay tuned. Informational, entertaining, practical and realistic, realistic, <laughs> And if we just had some music, we could end this thing. Yeah, I could go to the bathroom. Come on. So, uh, <laughs> I shouldn't have Dude, said let's that. Wait. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other day. Kick it. All right, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, we're starting a new one. Perfect. Okay. Play. Give me to take us out. Yep. Thank you for tuning in to Hard Headed Podcast. Please take a moment to rate, subscribe, like, and or share this episode. I'd love for you to go to uh, the podcast world. What do you call that? 
Apple, Apple Spotify, and leave us a review. We've only had a couple of them out there, so leave us a review. It'd be great. Thank you for tuning in. We always appreciate that you take time out of your day to listen to what we have to talk about. We will see you next week. With my dad. Hey! Do we have to get to the drop every time? I think we should. I'm going to go quicker. I think it just sounds better. Okay.